Hello everyone and welcome to Fletcher Farms Amarillo. I'm Julie Fletcher. This video is going to be about everything that happened the day of Lucky's surgery back on April 6th. If you don't know anything about Lucky or who Lucky is or any of his stories, I suggest watching um, his other videos in the playlist uh, labeled Lucky the Rescued Horse um, so you understand who he is and where he came from. I wanted to get this out to you because Lucky is um, just as much your horse as he was mine and you all deserve to know exactly what happened. Um, without your help and your support and your generosity, we never would have been able to save Lucky. And we really just can't thank you all enough for all of your help and support, kind words, and everything that you've done for us. All of this wouldn't be, we wouldn't be able to do all of this if it wasn't for you. So again, thank you all so much for your support, generosity, and kindness. Um, this is exactly what happened with Lucky the day of his surgery. Um, Dr. Brown explains it. and. I also did a section on remembering Lucky and the time that he had here on our farm with us and the love and kindness that he received and we wish that we just could have given him for a lot longer. Um, but this is, uh, this is Lucky's video. And thank you again for watching. We truly appreciate your support. We arrived at MVP for the day of Lucky's surgery and this was him getting out of the trailer and getting into a run while we were waiting for Dr. Brown to arrive. When Dr. Brown arrived, we discussed Lucky's case, his biopsy results, his blood labs, and everything that had been going on with him for the past few weeks. Nobody, including us, realized the extent of Lucky's suffering due to his immense strength and perseverance in hiding his trauma. When we were finally able to get Lucky in for surgery, this was the first time that Lucky could no longer hide what he was really feeling and the immense pain that he was in. Lucky was given extremely heavy sedation and received multiple nerve blocking injections to completely render the area of his eye numb. With all these steps in place, Dr. Brown was unable to do anything with the area other than better examine and assess the cancer due to his extreme discomfort and pain. Since I stayed by Lucky's side and was in the operating room, I saw firsthand what Lucky was going through. As soon as Dr. Brown touched under Lucky's eyelid, Lucky became aware and almost jumped out of the stock. He was hiding the extreme pain that he was really in. Dr. Brown explains more what he found during his exam. What he's got going on is that you've got the, um, the, well, the squamous cell carcinoma that has invaded the eye and I suspect that that tumour um, destroyed that eye. He's no longer see the, um, anything that resembles an eye. Mm -hmm. um, it feels, when I put my fingers in there, it's got a lot of pus um, and it smells and there's a lot of uh, thick tumour tissue that, that is quite large inside. Below the eye, there was a little uh, pimple or, or pus pocket that was squeezed and came out. But beneath that, the tissue doesn't feel, it feels like it could be part of a tumor as well. Mm -hmm. There's quite a large margin of, of the eyelid that's affected, or at least um, as well. So removing this area um, is gonna, you're gonna have to take quite a large um, resection margin and that would make it a little challenging to get the skin closed over the top of that. Plus the other complicating factor here is even you know, closing the skin may not be the best option in the fact that there's a lot of um, infection. It's, it's a pretty malodorous, nasty infection. Uh, it makes me wonder about how deep that tissue, abnormal tissue goes. It could extend into the orbit, the back of the eye, mm -hmm. the bony, and it potentially could could be in the sinus. And that's something that you'd probably figure out once she started carving away that tissue. So that's the eye further back, and um, at the sort of back of the mandible, below the ear, you know, back further back from the TMJ joint. Mm -hmm. He's got a hard mass that is, is is probably you know inch by inch and a half, or two inches by an inch. Um, it, not very movable. Um, it, and I'm concerned that it's going to adhere to the to the bone there. Um, we don't have a radiograph for that area. We've got one of the eye area, but that's interesting. We're going to about to do an ultrasound on that. Uh, we did, given the proximity of the eye to the sinus and this mass at the back of his mandible is in close proximity to the guttural pouch. And the guttural pouch is two big air-filled sacs that are. Um, below the ear and they connect to the throat. Um, two openings there. So we're able to drive a scope up the right nostril and then we can feed our way into the guttural pouch. 
And when we got into the guttural pouch, we could see in the outside, the lateral compartment, which is um, closest to where all the, uh, the mass is on the side of his face, we can see that there is a mass inside of the guttural pouch, a, a red um, colored, a light red colored pink mass that probably occupies about one third of that compartment. So estimating sizes probably could be um, you know, a turkey egg or bigger type mass. Okay. Um, that uh, is in that lateral compartment, it's up near the close to the style of hyoid bone. There are some important vessels and nerves that are in that area, external um, carotid being one of them. Or, and so the theory here is that perhaps that, that mass on the outside could be connected with the carot uh, internally in, in the guttural pouch area. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, there is good evidence here that this tumor at the eye, probably originated at the eye, has spread through the lymphatic system. There's one evidence on the outside here. There's also evidence internally. So this tumor will have it spread there. It could have also spread throughout other parts of the body. That we you know, we look at um, internal organs such as the lungs, the GI tract. Um, it could possibly be through his body. Um, it's hard to determine that. It's a big animal. We don't have a whole right. body MRI right. and so forth. But having said that, the treatment options, and one would be to try to do surgery on the eye and the mass that we can see, um, the, the mass that's in the Guttural pouch is a very difficult one to approach um, and it's got complications associated with trying to deal with that mass, namely vascular damage to major va vascular structures and or nerves. I uh, probably wouldn't advise that um, uh, approaching that mass in the guttural pouch. Ex on the eye side, taking that mass out, it has um, infected, there's, there's a lot of infected tissue. Um, we would expect that that would not heal um, like a primary wound, when we put two fresh wound edges together, it's gonna to probably take a long time to heal. And if there's any tumor tissue left behind, then eventually it will look similar to what it does now mm -hmm. because that tumor will come back. Right. Um, and similarly on, the, on the, the, the mass on the mandible at the back here, that's a cleaner mass. It would probably heal a whole lot better. But again, not knowing how far does it extend. We're going to try to learn something about it when we do an ultrasound here, but in summary, um, prognosis for this guy is, is unfortunately poor, um, and that he's uh, somewhat uh, of a challenge to treat because um, he's painful, and to, to put local anesthetic in there and, and do what we need to do, he has to be pretty heavily sedated, and he, he, he may or may not want to stand for that. Uh, so the next option would be to do general anesthesia and then draft horses. General anesthesia is tricky because of their body weight and their mass and perfusion and the potential complication of muscle injury from laying down on, the, on their side for too long. So um, again, a, a tough situation being, um, you know, lots of things to consider and considering, um, you know, have to take into consideration, is it possible What's the best interest of the horse here? Right. Um, and that big question for you. We just want to do everything that's right for him and just make him comfortable for as long as he has. So that's that's what we'd like to do. Yeah. Well, we've got to Kate and we'll come and have a chat to you as well. But, gotcha. Yeah. Dr. Brown did an ultrasound of the tumor that was a little bit back further on his head. And in this ultrasound, he found that the tumor went deep and was probably affecting the bone. And during this ultrasound, he also found another tumor that was just a little bit above where this tumor was just below Lucky's ear. So at this point, Dr. Wagner came and had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with me about Lucky's prognosis and that he was in a lot of pain and had been in a lot of pain for a very long time. Lucky was suffering horribly, probably for months before we rescued him, and that suffering was increasing every day. The tumor grew behind his eye to a point that it ruptured his eye globe and then was left untreated by his previous owner. Dr. Wagner explained that we had done everything possible 
that we could for Lucky and surgery not being an option, his infection and pain was only going to get worse. The fly season was starting and there would be no way to keep the flies out from landing in the open wound. Corey and I had a long conversation about options and what was the best course of action for Lucky and Lucky only. No extent or amount of pain medication in his condition was reducing the pain in any way. His eye had been hollowed out and destroyed by cancer, leaving an open wound that could not be closed. The cancer had spread to his limb system and most likely was affecting other organs as well. Lucky, as with all our animals, was one of the hardest decisions we had to make. We made the decision to say goodbye solely based on what was best for Lucky.
We just got Lucky home from the vet's office. He's hanging out in the trailer for a minute. Hi, buddy. Good boy. Everyone's all kind of excited and looking around. So yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. It's uneven.
you, bud. You know, you get your eye fixy. You know, you're okay. He would not let me clean his eye today, so it's nasty. Very yuckers down. We compromised, though, so I just gave you Alpha Pro, and we didn't clean your eye. <laughs> Thank you.